right, everybody, welcome back to Falcon 22. I'm Dave Vellante and you're watching theCUBE's continuous coverage, this is day two. We live in an API economy, but APIs, you know, they're sometimes vulnerable. Michael Nicosia is here, he's the Chief Operating Officer and co-founder of Salt Security, API Security Specialist. Michael, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much, Dave, glad well, to be here. Well, you're very welcome. Why did you and your co-founder, is it Roy? Yeah. Why did you guys start Salt Security? So, really easy, I mean, as you mentioned, I mean, the proliferation of APIs um, constantly is growing on a year-to-year -year basis. So in 2015, when he and I met, uh, we had this idea that it was going to continue to grow and APIs were going to be critical to every organization uh, from an innovation perspective, uh, from, a, from a safety perspective, and we thought that current tools out there couldn't uh, protect against the new threat vector that we thought was going to happen. And you, know, you fast forward to 2022 and here we are. It's you know, the largest growing threat vector from an API perspective because APIs are just growing like crazy. Right, um, well, let's talk about the news. You, uh, 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 CrowdStrike made uh, an investment in yes. your company. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, tell us about that, why it's important and to have a strategic partner like that. Yeah, so first of all, we're super thrilled about the partnership. I mean, it's amazing. And not only the partnership, the strategic investment, um, you know, for us just signifies the importance of our two companies uh, in terms of what we want to do in the field together or in the market together. Um, so the strategic investment is amazing. The partnership is even more amazing just because it's kind of like, you know, uh, the first in its class from an API security perspective. You know, we've got partners from the cloud perspective providers, and then the only other partnerships we really have is with API management vendors. So this is unique in that it goes outside the uh, security ecosystem uh, to provide this partnership. And the nice thing about it is it's ex exclusive, excuse me, and uh, it just continues to validate you know, the leadership where we have in API security as well as you know, obviously a leadership that CrowdStrike has. Exclusive in the sense that CrowdStrike's not going to invest in another API competitor and you're not going to take investment from uh, an endpoint. Exactly. Uh, endpoint or, you know, really or you know, cloud workload Anything security. within that vastly exactly that expanding <laughs> portfolio. Exactly. So pretty much anybody. <laughs> no, so exactly. Except network security. That's, uh, that, I'm, I, from what I saw in the keynote yesterday, that's sort of on the table <laughs> <laughs> for now. Um, so, okay, so why should customers care about this? What, what's the benefit to them? Yeah, so if you think about you know, um, the security you know, profile of organizations and where they seem to have you know, um, potential risk, threat vectors, you know, endpoint, you know, cloud, obviously API becomes a bigger you know, threat vector as well. So I think the partnership just solidifies the fact that we want to create a better uh, security profile for organizations um, and we want to make it safe for them to innovate and continue to do what they do. Um, so I think that's the importance and when you put the two together, um, it just creates a, a larger value proposition, more stickiness from endpoint to cloud to APIs. So we have a, a, a partner, the Cube, in, 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 in New York City mm -hmm. and it's called ETR and they do quarterly surveys of uh, CISOs, CIOs, IT buyers, about 12 to 1,500 a quarter. And so I, I was chatting with those guys last week. They, they knew we were going to be a CrowdStrike, and they, so they ran some data for all the API security vendors. And you guys were, you know, they had like the Gartner Magic Quadrant, but it's right. not, you know, vision and execution. It's spending momentum and like presence in their survey. It's uh -huh. like market share, mar mind share. Sure. You guys were up and to the right, like way, way, way ahead. I presume that's why you got the attention of CrowdStrike. Um, I, I found their data set to be incredibly good. That's how we found CrowdStrike years ago. Like, uh -huh. wow, who's this company? Yeah. You know, companies like CrowdStrike, Okta, Zscaler, Snowflake, off the charts. But you guys were really noticeable. Talk about the spending momentum you're seeing with, with customers. Where's that coming from? Yeah, I mean, look, for us, it's a continuing growing market. Uh, it's accelerating and we're still in the you know, early stages of the market, which is amazing. But if you think about what organizations do, they innovate, right? They innovate through you know, software, through applications, through APIs. So if you think about you know, how do they continue to innovate safely, they need a solution like you know, Salt Security to protect 
you know, from any bad actors that could potentially, you know, create any breaches, vulnerabilities. Uh, so I think that that's why uh, CISOs in particular are super excited about talking to us, making sure that they, they have all of their bases covered, uh, especially when it comes to applications that they have within their organization, which continues to grow. And not to, not to be a methodology geek, but the methodology they use is to essentially say, is a customer spending more or less? They subtract the lesses from the mores, and that's mm -hmm. what you're left with. And one of the lesses is churn. Mm -hmm. And if you have high churn, yeah. your spending momentum you know, in, their, in their methodology goes yeah. into the tank. Yeah. So you have, it's obvious from the data you have very low churn. Is that Absolutely. what you're seeing in the field? Why is that? Yeah, I mean, again, I think it's, it goes back to the value that we bring to customers. Uh, I think you know, our solution works. We're the only you know, AI ML based solution with deep context so we can really take a closer granular look at the APIs. Uh, model those APIs, create a baseline, and really protect against them. So, I mean, our solution works, and it works really well. Uh, and I think we provide value in that, you know, CISOs don't have to worry about, you know, any bad actors trying to infiltrate their applications because they know that Salt Security is there protecting them. I know you're not the tech guy, but you're the founder, co-founder of a technology company, so you've got to be conversant in the tech. This is the way it is a in bit. our business. So <laughs> tell us about the tech. What's so cool about it? What's the differentiation? Yeah, I, I guess, and I mentioned it, it's, uh, it's really AI, ML based. Uh, you know, we leverage big data. Uh, and it's really the context associated with that, which means that you know, we can get into granular details of really baselining the API itself. Um, and what we do really well is, uh, because these are unique attacks, uh, and these attacks could be days, weeks, months, and we're the only vendor that, that can really correlate across that timeline because of the context uh, based uh, big data that we leverage to be able to you know, spot these potential you know, bad actors uh, that we look for. And all this happens in the, in the cloud, or? Absolutely, or, it's or, all. You have a server in your office. It, no, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no, it's all, it's a 100% SaaS based, cloud based solution. I think that's one of the reasons why the partnership with CrowdStrike is so uh, amazing as well. Talk a little bit more about the synergies between CrowdStrike and Salt Security. T tons of synergies. I mean, if you think about from, you know, from the part of, you know, being a little fluffy culture, uh, the two companies have similar cultures. Uh, we go after similar you know, cloud, uh, first cloud innovative companies. Uh, if you think about you know, kind of the technology that um, uh, CrowdStrike has put forth, uh, revolutionized the endpoint security and now moving into the cloud, uh, you know, leveraging AI and ML, uh, we're doing the exact same thing. Uh, so I think there's a lot of synergies associated with that. And again, the, the final point that I'll make is that you know, we think you know, uh, together, the you know, better together story is, is, is resonates just because if you think about all of the you know, areas that you, you know, have potential breaches, you know, these threats, you know, we kind of cover them all with, uh, with the partnership. I am, when, when, I, when, I, when I talk to a, f a founding, you know, co-founder um, who's a go-to-market pro, I like to ask them, how did you know when to scale? I mean, you <laughs> got to have product market fit. I see so many companies yeah. failing, because they try to go to market before they have, they try to scale go to market before they have product market. But how did you do it? How did you know when to scale? You know, it, it's tricky and you got to look at a couple of you know, factors. You got to look at the market. You got to look at you know, how much uh, potential opportunity exists. And you really need to look at you know, the momentum that is being established. Um, you know, when you look at, when you talk to CISOs, kind of you know, talking to them about projects and how um, you know, how they prioritize projects and where API security fits, you know, once it begins to be, you know, the top three, um, you know, and you, and you start that momentum and obviously you bring in the revenue, um, I think that that's, those are signs that we see that we say, okay, we need to double down on making sure we've got coverage across, you know, the world in order for us to support And, and you were demand. the first sales rep, right? Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, Roy and I, I was the first AE, right. he was the first SE. Okay, so, so but your early, Go to market pros are, are probably different than what you're bringing in today. You didn't have you know a lot of BDRs at the time, but 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 you guys were like hands-on consultants, absolutely you know, like sort of process consultants, sales yep. folks, right? And and then you you codify that when you're ready to scale. Exactly. And now you're is that kind of a, yeah. what you're doing? A absolutely. I mean, you nailed it. I mean, it's uh, in the early stages, it's validating that there's a problem that exists in the market, and how important is that problem, you know, to CISOs. 
you know, so when we first started, we met probably about 50 CISOs where we just had that conversation. Uh, not about sales, it was more about, hey, we just want to talk to you about a problem we think exists in the market, love to get your reaction to that problem, and then obviously how you're solving that problem and how much of a priority is that problem, how important is it to you. And then once you have those discussions, then you can really find those individuals, early adopters, if you will, that are ready to buy, and then it kind of pr proliferates from there. Uh, and then you have a CRO, I, I, I presume, right? So, what was that like, finding him or her? It was a really important first Super sales important. hire. Yeah. Uh, how did you go about that? How long did it take? Yeah, so it took about six to eight months. And you know, it's really tough because you know, we look at cultural fit you know, above everything else. So it's not you know, that can they do the job, it's culturally do they fit in, and you know, how much can that individual scale uh, the organization. So there's a lot of factors associated, there's a lot of individuals associated to, uh, you know, with the interview process. So that's how we looked at it. Um, and obviously we wanted somebody that had experience, you know, in a company our size, was able to scale it, uh, and so on. The one tricky thing is, and I'll, I'll tell you this, is, uh, you know, for Roy and I, you kind of have to let go a little bit. That was really tough. So. N knowing that you need to do that is something that uh, a little bit of founderitis. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's hard, right? It's yeah, hard. it's your baby. It's like what? <laughs> <laughs> I get it, Michael. Thanks so much for coming on the cube. Congratulations Thank on you, the uh, on Thank the news, the investment, and good luck. Awesome. Thank you so much. Right, Appreciate you're, it. You're really welcome. All right, keep it right there. We'll be back right after this short break. Dave Vellante for the cube at Falcon 22, CrowdStrike's big user event. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.